I just got off the phone with Lamont and someone else to do with finances. And we're just kind of like balancing things up. I felt like we was like the, the SEC almost, you know, the oh SEC my. dealing with this. So it's, it came, came like that. So we're setting everything to um, being balanced where people can understand. Um, some people had to learn about converter, how to um, change currency, different things. It's really like a learning thing. has been interesting. But Dwayne came out from the blue. Haven't heard him or seen him in weeks. And he just busts up like a whale. Who has the one million? <laughs> I'm like, look, I'm going to sell you some garbage or two Python classes. Of course, it's haha joking. It gives me the laugh. Oh, that's funny. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, I did see his uh, note today, and I did see Lamont's note about figuring out a way of doing the conversion. So I'm so glad you're working with him as another mm -hmm. his yeah. apprentice. There's like another lady named Melissa, too. She's like, she knows how to deal with that and finances and things. So we were just finishing before I came on here, finishing up our conversation with so that thing can work out now. Okay. So it's good. But Dwayne was hilarious today. Fantastic. And I saw your note in the chat as well about Christian. So when we talk about Scrota, you can mention Christian's good news. Yeah, it was he floated out there on what coined I was really surprised. He kind of blacked out certain parts, but you see what he had and he was so excited about it. I'm, I'm congratulating happy him. for him. Yeah, I'm so happy. He sent me a note saying that he had taken your, um, you know, the group's advice and had started uh, reworking his white paper and things like that. So he had really, um, oh, good. You know, yeah, started putting in the work. So, yeah. That's good. Well, you know how I am about uh, time. So let's get started. I'm sure we're going to have more people coming in. We're going to have people on Facebook watching. So, um, hi, ladies. <laughs> hey. Yes. Yes. So, uh, and then hopefully Dr. Keisha will come on as well to talk about the school or Dwayne, uh, either one. So, uh, oh, one second here. We have another panelist coming in. He just raised his hand, Tommy, here. Uh, hey, Tommy hey, Lee. Hello, hey, how are you ladies? Hey, Tommy. Hello. How's it going? How are we tonight? We're good, thank you. So we were just right. started, so you have good timing. Okay, uh, awesome, awesome, that's awesome. Oh, I need a... Oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna demote you. I think I figured out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh, hold, hold on. Um, Anita. Oh, goodness. Did you sign in by your name? Yeah, you did. Hold on. Hi, I Anita. read the instructions. I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, change role. There we go. Got it. Okay. Um, and Dr. Keisha's here. So, we're going to. Have her come in the conversation. Hey, Dr. Keisha. Hello. Hey, Dr. Keisha. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Okay, okay. Okay, well, we got the gang here. We'll see if uh, Dwayne comes in, but he um, has been doing really well with his home health care business, and that is oh, great. now. So he's been straddling <laughs> a couple of different things. So uh, so that's that's where we are tonight. So want to welcome everyone officially to the Black Blockchain Consultants. I will say that I missed you guys. We haven't met officially as a, an entire group in a month. And um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, ah, you know, I'm missing everybody. But uh, of course, we've been keeping in touch through Flock. And oh, here's the man of the hour, Mr. Dwayne. How you doing? Mr. Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne, can you hear us? Uh, he put himself on mute. You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> hey. Morning. I mean, good evening. <laughs> good evening. How you doing? I don't know where I am. <laughs> uh, we, we were just getting started. So, so we want to welcome everyone uh, officially. So we've got, as you can see, a lot of different panelists here, but we think we're going to have a good time tonight. So I always start off with going over a couple of different articles that I found interesting as we have more and more people come in. And then um, we're going to have some announcements, things that are happening. We're going to talk about um, the recent apprenticeship that we have just done, another apprenticeship opportunity that Tommy is bringing to us. We're going to talk about the school. We're going to talk about the consulting company, all of that great stuff. And I also have a couple of questions for people as well. So plenty of stuff. I know we're not going to 
uh, get done in an hour, I'll, I will push, but I doubt it. Um, so, you know, please get your glass of red wine or brown liquor or whatever <laughs> it is that, that. You know, that you need to have in order to chill and relax and um, we're going to have a good time. So I'm going to start off with sharing my screen here. You all know how I love my articles. And I do post articles every day just to keep us informed of what's happening in the blockchain space. So we are posting articles every day to um, our Flock Knowledge Learning Group, mm -hmm. as well as Facebook and Twitter. And I'm also doing a video of the day on YouTube. Um, and I found out there's a black blockchain network on YouTube as well. So I haven't checked them out yet, but they have about four mm -hmm. or five videos. So if you wanted to, uh, to take a look at what they're doing, you can do that as well. Um, but this is the first article that I, that I have here. And of course, as my panelists, you all know, you chime in and you let me know what you're thinking here. Um, first of all, uh, the blockchain is, according to a recent statistic that I read, 3.1 trillion dollar industry by 2030. 3.1 trillion. So my question to you is how are you going to get a piece for your family? And then how is we as a community going to get our piece? And to be able to share that with the community. So um, the whole point of this group is for us to figure that out and to take action on making that happen. And this is one of the first articles that I saw um, or one of the articles that uh, I'm presenting tonight that I saw in regards to having an advisory board in the blockchain crypto space could separate you from the hype. And there was a specific section in here that I wanted to read to you. There's a gentleman named uh, Wu, uh, Justin Wu, who is a blockchain evangelist and growth hacker. And he said something that was interesting in this article he says here the industry is really lacking maturity still there are many young players out there that claim to have expertise in an area that nobody understands yet Wu believes that everyone is in the same boat and that everyone is still green not having very many true experts in the space with a new industry, there are always bad actors who enter into the space and prey on new players' vulnerabilities and inexperience. The space needs more mature players from different industries and fields to come in, collaborate, and unite the marketplace. Otherwise, the space is just comprised of inexperienced young investors who are comprising, or sorry, who are promising to change things with no real understanding or experience in how to execute that. By taking people at their word initially, all we ever have is a promise to do something. Executing on that promise is an entirely different conversation. And then he has here, beyond the white paper lies an inability to provide real world context. So I thought this was very interesting because many of us are of a certain age, I'm 42, some of us are more mature than that, and we may think because we're not young or because we're not technical that we can't provide real um, value within the blockchain. And one of the ways that I read this was experience not just in terms of, I've been in the blockchain since 2011, but in experience in terms of I've lived, I've seen, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I've been hustled. I lived through internet 1.0 and 2.0 and, and all of that. So I'm gonna stop my share here and open this up to the panel and ask you, what do you think? And don't forget to unmute yourself if you mute it. Nobody? I think okay. I, I think okay. I think um yeah you, you have to have you have to have experience in the in your own industry because the blockchain is just about seeing what kinds of applications actually make sense to put on a blockchain. Mm -hmm. Just because you can put something on a blockchain, there may be other ways that is cheap or cheaper, uh, less expensive 
and um, easier to do. And some things may um, need to, should, should just be centralized, you know, or certain parts of things that need to be centralized, you know, and, and I think that's where you need all the industry experts, not just some kids. You see, here's the thing, here's the thing. And, and, and this is what I always um, enjoyed. It's, you're more valuable if you've been, Zed Shaw wrote this. I remember it now from the Python the hard way. He says, you're more valuable if you're like a, um, if you're a lawyer and then you learn how to program because then you know what, what the pain points are in your industry mm -hmm. than it is for some programmer to program. He, what does he know? He can only go and, and ask somebody all the questions. That's all he can do. That's all they can do. And that's why they get a lot of things wrong because they, cause they're not in the industry. So when you get to solve your own problem, those are the applications that actually make sense. So I think that that's what they're talking about, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Anyone else? I, I wanted to add, um, can you guys hear me, Sharif? Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to add, I like how you expanded the um, possibilities, though, for um, for people who are not um, de uh, developers or who are, you know, people like us who are, you know, interested in it and we're learning about it as much as we can. Um, I think we can help onboard those who are interested in it um, and who are not, not a developer. Developers, so there is a place for us, and and I definitely we acknowledge, you know, the um, the uh, holes and the possibilities for, um, you know, charlatry and whatnot. You know, um, we don't have to be, you know, we do exactly the opposite of that and provide that value. So I, I like how you expanded that idea, the idea of, um, you know, our age, our personal experiences, exactly. uh, things like that. I think it's it, that's very important. That's one way um, I, it gives people a sense of empowerment, you know, um, based on wherever they're coming from. So, yeah, right. That's a good point. Right. I would, like, I, would, I would like to piggyback off of what Dwayne said and um, in regards to, um, you know, the actual application portion of it, because remember there's 15, over 1,500 um, tokens or so-called so companies out here on the blockchain currently. Mm -hmm. They could be piggybacking mm -hmm. off the other blockchains, but, but again, um, over 1,500. So, you know, we do need some, some experts out here that actually knows what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, um, I believe coming from a devil's advocate aspect, you know, the youth, the youth actually you know can really embrace this and mm -hmm. and you know like take it over you know because you know um in russia they actually train their kids at like 10 years old to start programming like you know what i mean like that's like one of their major courses that they have to take you know the gremlin is over 50,000 programmers plus, you know, so what, what Dwayne was saying, like the programming aspect of it, you know, if you really, really wants to be a part of it, you just have to start reading and, you know, getting into the YouTubes and, you know, but definitely what Dwayne was saying, like every, every, every application does not need to be on here. But mm -hmm. if you do have an SME that's, you know, uh, expert in that one area, whether it's healthcare, whether it's networking, whether it's, um, production promotion marketing this 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 growth with this wealth of growth is, is exploding for everybody so everybody can get their hands in on it you just have to you know reach out you know that's all you have to do right eugenia yes can you hear me yep okay great um i've been chopping at the bit because i actually thought about this um this past week i'm uh 45 plus and I wonder, you know, is this a young person's game? And I'm a part of the Government Blockchain Association, and I was talking to one of the teachers um, because I, I really want to take their courses. And he was letting me know that they're in a process of teaching uh, uh, government officials the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. was a tidbit of an idea that I have and he was like, wow, you know, a lot of people don't understand what you just mentioned. And I'm like, okay, good. You know, I feel like, you know, patting myself. 
fact of the education that we've gained being a part of this space um, with me just getting into it in December, that yeah, there really is a place for for us, no matter what age we are, there's still a place because there are a lot of people that are just getting in on the government level, let alone just regular population. And so um, that let me know that there's a place for me and my, I, you know, the general idea that I have, I really want to develop. Um, and I'm, I'm so looking forward to continuing mm -hmm. to learn and, and moving. I actually never thought that. I mean, I'm 50. I just turned 50 this year, so I made 50. And I never thought about that. I just came in um, into this game in December. And the reason why I say I never thought about this is a young person's thing, because it's too new for anybody to be an expert in this. Even for developers that have been in, in the game, like Dwayne, even though he knows a lot, he's still learning like and finding out a whole lot and developing more. And I thought of it, and I still look at it like, is anybody's game? And to me, it's like whoever can research, can catch it the quickest, and we're willing to research and really do due diligence, that's who's going to be vanguarding this. This is who's going to have the, you know, the advantage. Doesn't matter if you're 80, doesn't matter if you're 18. Right. It's like whoever is going to pay attention, get down on the work, do your own research, take the courses and classes, learn a lesson. That, that's who's going to do it. Because this whole thing is mega. To me, it's like too mega. Yeah. 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 I was just, can the, I add the, to that? The, the coding part, the coding part, like I said, I just want the, everyone to be able to understand it. If some people want to learn it, right, mm -hmm. really learn it, that's fine. But once you're able to understand what they're doing, you can get a code monkey to code it. Because mm -hmm. you have to be the one, the architect, to know what, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, does this have to be on a blockchain? Why should this be on a blockchain? What's the, how does this make it, you know, if you understand how everything is supposed to work, you can get a guy to, to do that all day long. That's what it is. Like co programmers are going down. They're they they because um they're coming up with more and more things that have AI that you could just drag and drop stuff and and does the code. You saw we can make a website in five minutes now. Back in ninety five, that took me like two weeks to do that little <laughs> thing, and it looked like crap. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people was paying three thousand dollars for it, so it was good. <laughs> but I'm just saying. So don't get caught up in the program but you have to understand how it works so when you deal with the programmers tell them what you know you can tell them what it is so that's basically it i was going to add to you that it really is about the growth mindset you know mm -hmm. it, and that's the that that's over all different age groups and whatever um, and that really is the kind of attitude and mindset uh, there's a growth mindset you have to have dealing with technology anyway because because it changes all the time. You have to look at it in terms of, you know, not knowing how to just, like you're saying, Dwayne, just learn Python. I mean, if you learn the infrastructure of coding overall, it's Python today, it's Solidity tomorrow, it's, you know, whatever else, you know, coming down the pike. Um, but if we can really embrace the, the function of these technologies, and then like you were saying, Dwayne, like you were saying, Tommy, then onboard it, um, with your existing knowledge, you know, you'll learn better and you'll be able, you'll be able to, you'll be able to, to um, mm. eke out your niche in this space, you know, Absolutely. Uh, but it, it is really about that mindset. If you're, like you said, ready to do the work. Absolutely. You know, you Whatever go. you're, you're great at, you know, the blockchain can, you know, exponentially increase that, but is it, will it actually benefit on a blockchain? You know, will it, is it really purposely on the blockchain? And that's the first thing we have to, you know, you know, weed out, you know, all these companies and everything. Right. Yeah. I mean, we've already seen people, uh, not just people, but organizations rebranding themselves. <laughs> so that they're yeah. And, and getting delisted. <laughs> they're getting right. listed on the that's stock exchange for doing that. This is mess. just the same thing all over again. Exactly. It's back in the 90s. You slap a dot com on it. And <laughs> it's going up. Yeah. Kodak did it. Remember Kodak? If anybody's watching, Kodak did it. It went. They, 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 they. Yeah. But, but Kodak doesn't have a business model behind it. So one of the things that we need to be able to do, and this is something I've noticed within my full-time business, I write business plans, is you got to be able to think your way out of a paper bag. I'm just going to be honest with you. In terms of the people that are going to make real money, like Blaine was saying, you know, there are a lot of code monkeys out there. I, I don't necessarily use that term, but you know, 
Um, but very few people could really sit down and put together a wireframe or a storyboard or, you know, say it's got to go from here to here to here to here. And this is the reason why we're doing it. And to be able to explain it, whether you're explaining it to a CIO, which is chief information officer or mm -hmm. CTO, chief technology officer, or to the guy that's writing the check, the small business owner or the mid-sized business owner, et cetera. And the better you're able to communicate with those groups of people, the more money you can make. It's just that simple. So I wanna to go to my second article, because we spent a lot of time on that first article here, but I wanna to go to the second article really quickly. And um, this was something that was brought up by Dwayne this morning, and then Dr. Keisha chimed in, so I said, hey, we should talk about it. And that is Amazon launching their blockchain template, which when I read the article, I kind of chuckled to myself, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. So uh, AWS blockchain templates provide a fast and easy way to create and deploy secure blockchain networks using popular open source frameworks. These templates enable you to focus on building your blockchain applications instead of spending time and energy on manual setup of your blockchain network. The reason I laughed when I read this is because all I thought was IBM and the Hyperledger network. And then later on, I'll explain um, why, uh, well, We'll talk about it here. So they're saying here with Amazon, the benefits are they have fast deployment. So you can get started with the blockchain in a minute, quickly deploy your blockchain network on Amazon ECS or Amazon EC2 instances, and focus on building your applications. Um, the choice is between Ethereum and Hyperledger Fabric. So basically, Amazon is taking IBM's Hyperledger Fabric or Ethereum and basically wrapping it in to Amazon and AWS um, and what they already have. So uh, each framework offers distributed consensus algorithms, smart contract functionality, and access control features. Um, management tools, AWS blockchain templates include additional components to manage, monitor, and browse your blockchain. So it looks like they added a couple of additional features. And it's a pay-as-you-go resource. You could start up and shut down on demand, which is something you can do with um, Ethereum or uh, the Hyperledger fabric. But the reason why I wanted to talk about this, besides the fact that Dwayne and Dr. Keisha had a little conversation about it this morning, is because again, as blockchain consultants, we need to keep current with these types of, um, of um, news updates, which is why I spend so much time in the morning. No, I won't lie, it's, it's like 15 minutes. I spend 15 minutes in the morning posting stories to Flock or Facebook so that you can you know, stay engaged and know what's happening. Or you can go to our Twitter, again, just, even if you read just, I always take a little section of the article that's most important, and I you know, put that as the post, and then I put the link to the article. So that way, if things are uh, of importance to you, you are able to, um, to read those articles. So when you go to a networking event or a job um, interview or anything like that, you can speak intelligently about what's happening on the blockchain, either overall or within your industry. And someone wrote here, how do you access Flock? You need to be a part of the inner circle, which we're gonna talk about later. Um, but in order to access Flock, you need to be a part of our inner circle group. And, um, and we'll answer more about that, Crystal. So uh, anybody wants to respond to what Amazon is doing, and uh, Amazon really is working on ruling the world. So, but it's interesting that they're, they did not create their own blockchain, they're leveraging what's already out there. I, I thought that was really interesting. 
Well, um, I, 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 want, I chuckled a little bit when I saw that because I was thinking, um, you know, you were just talking about how can we onboard with what's happening. Um, I, I thought immediately like, you know, you know, like Wix, um, Wix websites, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. They're kind of, you know, drop and drop and drag, plug and play kind of thing. Um, yeah, essentially, that's, that's what I understood when they said that they wanted to go this route. And it still gave me, um, you know, encouragement because I know just like, the, I, I get a lot of business just helping people with Wix and Shopify and all these, you know, done for you, you know, quote unquote, done for you applications. People still need support. They still need coaching with that. So, you know, there's space for us with, with that. Uh, and any entrepreneur who you know gets with that and uh, finds out what what those templates look like or whatever, there, there's always an opportunity because people always need help. Everybody's at a different level of understanding. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, I'm sure they'll have their own team of of support. But you know, mm -hmm. if we know what we're doing with it, we can get in there as well. I I, I imagine it's it's true. Absolutely. Well, the reason why I posted is because I think that this is a direct um. It's a, it's a direct blow against um, a startup called Titanium. They were going after AWS. Mm. And that's why I just saw their, everything go down. They, 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 their, coin, their, their coins are like really cheap now. You can go look it up, T Titanium. It's a really good project, but they were going head to head with Amazon. So this, they're basically, Amazon has the AWS already set up and they, this, is their, this is their idea. This is what they were trying to decentralize AWS and so you can automatically deploy exactly from your tablet, just deploy a blockchain and set up a whole company right there. LLC, everything, just set everything up one, two, three mm. on your computer. So this, this is a direct um, blow against those guys. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know what? Amazon is their, their, um, their infrastructure, you know, underlines the internet. So, I mean, they're like, they're, it's like a yeah, everywhere. Everyone uses AWS and, it is, and it's expensive. Mm -hmm. it it's is. Not, not cheap. It is not yeah. at all. And, and it's a kind of a monopolistic kind of move, you know, like you say, knocking out the little guy on that. But um, yeah, it's well, be interesting. If, if, if anybody know me and, um, you know, just to, to piggyback on the decentralization portion of it, you know, I mean, why create the will if the will is already created, you know? Well, because Amazon <laughs> owns everything. That's yeah. why. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to cost you a quarter million dollars at least, I mean, to, to provide an efficient blockchain. That's not true. No? That's not true because you got the miners. I'm mining right now. Like, I got, like, serious ASICs, like, just me, like, me I, from here. Right. I got, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just got two more just now. So I'm part of the blockchain. I'm throwing a lot of Terra hash towards holding up um, Sia coin and um, Litecoin. And um, well, I'm not doing a whole lot with Litecoin and this other one, Decred. So that's just me. In my group, it's like five of us doing that. And when I could coax the other 200 people to get on board, you know, I mean, there's that's a lot fair. of that, 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 that is fair. That's fair. But compared to, you know, the bulk It's just of about not having all of them in that kind of control. <laughs> you know, they they that's, the, that's the dystopian future then, right? Yeah, I mean, everything. They got everything. Everything. we need to embrace it. We need to embrace it and find our segue in there. We ain't going to be able to compete with Amazon. It's just that simple. We just have to find our niche in there. No, that's you, what you I'm, will I'm, be. You, will, you could, you could be, but you have to get the, the whole people understanding what it facts. really is and what facts, they're really losing. Facts. What they're really losing, like... Anyway, that's another conversation. <laughs> we're not, we're not, anyway, don't get me started. I agree. I totally agree. But the, the, yeah. this is an hour long debate that these fellas yeah, are they have, they have patent pendings. And I mean, it is crazy. They are really, but we just have to find our niche. That's all I'm saying. We have to find our niche in there. You, you find your niche. However, um, there was a time that people thought Amazon was stupid to go up against Borders and, and uh, Barnes and Nobles. And look what happened. Yeah, shut them all down. Now, yeah, shut them all down. Exactly. So, um, or very close to it. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, so, I want to go through some announcements, the things that are happening with our group, and give, of course, my panelists a chance to talk about some of the things that they are doing here. So, um, 
The first thing is I want to welcome anyone who is brand new and has never been to one of our meetings before, and maybe you haven't even been on blackblockchainconsultants.com. And I just want to make sure that you understand who we are and what we do. So I'm going to share my screen here with you. Uh, I apologize. My computer is a tad bit slow here. But uh, Black Blockchain Consultants is a peer-to-peer -peer group that understands and believes in the power of the blockchain. And make this big here. Move this over. Um, this is a 3.1, potentially $3.1 trillion industry. I was at a government blockchain association meeting last Monday. And the, I mentioned this as a statistic. No one in the room, there were about 40 people, no one in the room doubted the $3.1 trillion. Everyone just said they thought it would be sooner than the article that I read said. So the article that I read said by 2030, and there was a guy sitting behind me that said, no, three years. Um, you know, because he was counting the crypto market as a trillion dollars, blah, blah, blah. So we had a very lively discussion about that. But whether you believe it's three years or, you know, 12 years from now, it's coming. Um, this group uses its collective skills. We're going to use our networks and resources. We're here to build multi-million dollar companies. We notify each other of job opportunities, and ultimately we're here to build generational wealth. And every Monday, sorry, uh, every fourth Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we have our general meeting. It's open to the public. You can invite anybody, your mom, cousins, you know, friends, co-workers, church members, whomever, to come to this meeting and just see what we're doing. You can also invite them to our Facebook group or our YouTube page or um, our Twitter page, you know, just to get a feel for what's happening in this industry and how they can get involved. Um, Someone asked, I think it was uh, Crystal asked about getting into Flock. You get into Flock when you are part of something called the inner circle. So we have certain things that are uh, no charge for people. The reason is because we are here primarily to educate people and to get them thinking about being a, a blockchain consultant. And um, blockchain consultancy is a very new term. The industry is still forming. So basically anything is possible. There's no real job description for being a consultant. But we do have a couple of things that you can get at no charge. Number one is if you come to our website, you can get our free report, should you become a blockchain consultant. Again, come to our website, you'll see it there, get the free report and it'll uh, send it to you. The second thing you can get if you email me at info at blackblockchainconsultants.com is I'll send you the courses that we're taking at no charge. You can take those courses, you know, by yourself and, um, and see where things uh, lead for you. However, if you're anything like me, I love the, the idea of a group and a community, which is why we created the inner circle within the Black Blockchain Consultants. And we have a few things that we do within the inner circle. Number one is we take the courses together. So we start off with the Certified Blockchain Expert course, which is from um, blockchain-council.org. We are taking Python, which is a coding uh, course so that we are able to speak with coders. Um, we are also looking at potentially taking things like solidity or um, learning how to do smart contracts, etc. We also have study groups that get together and the study groups get together once a week. You can find a study group pretty much any day of the week. We have uh, Dawn Brooks, who has volunteered, because some people are having um, a little trouble finding study groups. Dawn Brooks has volunteered to help those who cannot find a study group to find study groups. And she's going to help us organize those study groups. I really, really want to thank her. We also received feedback that it would be great if we had a Python tutor. So we have two. We actually have about 
four that we are going to audition over the next couple of weeks. But um, we had our first tutoring session, which my understanding is it went very well. I wasn't able to attend, but it went very well on Saturday. So every Saturday at 10 a.m., we have um, our, our tutoring session. And we're going to have a second session either on a Tuesday or Wednesday. We are um, interviewing a young man named Pavel on Wednesday. And, um, and then we have another gentleman, um, I think his name is Michael, that's coming in on Tuesday. So we will make sure that uh, you get all the information that you need. He's, uh, Michael is coming in on Tuesday, May 1st. So it's the week after. Um, but you don't have to take these courses alone. You can, you know, come and join the group. And actually, if you get stuck or anything like that, you have people that you can go to so that you can get unstuck. Um, we also have apprenticeships. So there's no need to study a whole bunch of courses and not have any uh, real world experience to go with it. So we had our first apprenticeship. We have plenty more. I'm talking with about three or four people about some apprenticeships that will hopefully happen in the next couple of months. But um, great way to get some real world experience, add that to your resume right. um, or your consulting companies or whatever else you are creating. So our five-year vision is uh, number one, we want a network of 10,000 individuals. Why do we want so many people? A couple of different reasons. Number one is if I come to the group and I say, hey, I just heard about an opportunity in Ghana, I want people to raise their hand and say, I live in Ghana, I can take that opportunity. Or mm -hmm. if somebody comes and says, or if, or if I come to the group and say, hey, we have an opportunity in, um, environmental sciences is there anybody in here that does that people raise their hand hey I do that we can do that that way people can come to us for any reason anywhere in the world and we have a presence and there's there's power in numbers the second thing we want to do is I would like for everyone to have a minimum of 150,000 a year in income that may be your main job plus your side hustle plus maybe some investments in some other blockchain startups that we do, but we want everyone earning above average income. Mm -hmm. Third thing we want is to build several businesses worth 10 million to a billion dollars. Um, and then the fourth is to teach 50,000 people per year. We wanna teach uh, school children, we wanna teach adults, we wanna teach senior citizens, um, as many people as we can about the blockchain, doesn't matter where you are in life. So that's our five-year vision, and we are really working hard to put um, some systems in place. It's going to take a few more months for us to get our rhythm, but um, right now, that's what we're doing. And thus far, I'm hoping that everyone that is a part of the inner circle is really finding you know, value from being a part of it. So uh, does anyone have anything to add while I look at these questions here that people have asked? I'll jump in. I'll say that I have uh, found value being a part of the inner circle and I encourage anyone who is not uh, to definitely join. It is beneficial if you, depending on what your goals are. So if, if you wanna get into this blockchain space, you wanna uh, one day become a blockchain consultant, definitely consider uh, Reese um, program because it, it, it is one component. I'm a part of a study group and I, I love ladies. Uh, we had a gentleman, uh, but he had to switch uh, a day more uh, compatible to his schedule, but I love it. And we support each other. Uh, we ask each other questions. If we don't understand something, somebody in a group does have that information and we are, um, you know, each other out. Tessa's in my group. Uh, we're in a group together I should say and I enjoy it and being a and having the opportunity to do the apprenticeships that's great like Cherie said you can put that on your resume don't be afraid step up step up step out and we're all here supporting each other and it, it is it's awesome I, I definitely have benefited from being it. absolutely I wanted to add too, it's, and when you're in a group like this, you almost get, um, 
you 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 get a little jaded. You 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 think everybody knows what you know, like like the experience you had, Eugene. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we're just kind of talking it now. It's kind of natural to us, and it's kind of surprising when we run into people who don't know what we know. You know, exactly. So, um, I would definitely encourage anyone who's new in the call to you know, be a part of these kinds of communities, because I'm telling you, I mean, there's so much other crap you could be watching on TV and whatnot, and this is worth doing. Yes. And this is yes. at least being a part of this, this group right here and things like this, um, talking about uh, blockchain technology and that, but that, that's, that's worth at least a little bit of your TV time, you know, watching stuff. You can get that stuff on demand, you know, learn something new that will really take you to the next level not just yourself but your family exactly. i would say okay. you know so so anyway you know big ups to bbc <laughs> yes yes so yeah. i will say yes i watch real housewives of atlanta but i do watch it only on demand because i'm too busy like doing other stuff so yeah at 10 o'clock last night i did catch the final reunion episode i do want to answer two questions before um we let other people chime in uh carissa asked if there's if the membership fee is monthly annual or one time it is an annual fee of a hundred dollars and that's $100 per year for everything uh, in terms of the community. Our goal is not to make a whole bunch of money off you. Um, our goal is for us to really create a community and then go out and we're building a school, not a physical school, but a virtual school. We're building a school and we're building a consulting company and to collectively come together and make money as a group selling our consulting services. So in June, I'm going to have only for Inner Circle members, I'm gonna have a meeting where I'll outline, okay, here's where we're headed with the consulting company and the school as a business. And it will be a business with an operations manager, with the CEO, with the sales department, with you know, uh, project managers, all of that. Um, that takes time for me to kind of flush out as um, as a business plan writer and all of that. So that's gonna happen sometime in June, but I'll give everyone plenty of notice. So you have to be an Inner Circle member and you have to be a certified blockchain expert in order to be a part of that consulting company. And there'll be some other things you'll need to do as well. Um, Terrence is asking, is there some kind of member profile guy? It would be good to know the background of the member so we can leverage their experience. Um, there will be. I, I just don't have enough hours in the day. So one of the things I'm thinking about is having um, a virtual admin and an operations person working with us. Um, somebody, Carl is saying here, I live in the PNW. It seems all the scheduling is EST. Am I right in my assumption? Yes, you are. Um, everything is EST just because um, it, it helps us uh, all speak the same language. Um, and then how can we get some players on Central Time or PST? We have a lot of people on the West Coast, Carla. So what you can do is, um, I, I believe you're part of the inner circle, is just put into to flock that you're looking for some people on the West Coast. Um, Corey is saying, completely busy with my crypto portfolio. Uh, and other investments, DUFB page, taking Python courses and work. Just started following BBC to stay up to date on blockchain info. There are so many hours in the day. Any suggestions on how to better manage the conversations on Flock? Uh, Corey, I'm even trying to figure that out. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, I just say, you know, do what you can. Do what mm -hmm. you can. Um, and don't be afraid of FOMO. I, I've, I've stopped being afraid of FOMO. I just, I can't do it. Um, so, uh, anybody else have anything else to say about our goal and our vision or the study groups or the Python tutor? Um, was anybody in the session on Saturday with Melissa? Okay, I, I heard very good things. Oh, Tessa, you, uh, unmute yourself. Sorry, yes, I was, I was in, I missed the first 15. <laughs> Um, minutes of it, but um, I thought it was really good. She was real relaxed, and um, people were asking questions. Some people were asking questions, and she went over thoroughly explaining, you know, 
different um, points like um, what is it exponentials like the the PEDMAS the parentheses mm -hmm. exponents you know what I mean that that that, that person went over that because someone yep she went over that and I think she was going over variables when I came in but she took time to ask questions and she took her time explaining um, each part and then she mentioned something about like if like there's something we're looking for we can always go to Google because there's something in there that you can find you know, you go to Google look up something for Python because she went there and pulled up some information out of there that she found but she I thought she was really good she took her time she didn't rush through anything um, she asked us if we had any questions anyone that had questions she just began to answer and then she began to work um, the program into Python yeah I thought she was good Great. I will say that I really like her as the administrator um, of the group because she followed up with me. Uh, she gave me her GitHub, which I need to post into Flock, and she sent me um, her email address and, and asked for people to submit their questions a couple of days in advance. So I even appreciate her. I think she's going to be great. Um, like I said, you know, we're going to have a couple of other people we are auditioning for this second spot. The reason I don't want to have just one person do it is because if something happens to one person, I always feel like we just need to have a backup. But ultimately, I'm looking for someone from within this group to say, hey, I want to be the Python king or queen because ultimately I want to have one of us leading those sessions. And those are paid positions. Dwayne. I'm Melissa. Well, Dwayne is kind of busy, so. Well, you said <laughs> King. Are, I thought about Dwayne. Those, those are paid <laughs> positions. Everything that we're doing or trying to do, I always offer payment. So this is part of our business model, and these are going to be paid positions. And one of the things I was expressing to somebody, I can't remember who, is that if you become the Python King, for example, you will be able to also, because people will know you as the Python person, you're probably gonna get a lot of freelance business because of it, because people will see you as the Python tutor when we've got 10,000 Inner Circle members. So you literally could create a whole new business out of being the Python person, go to person. So really think about it if it's your thing. Um, got more questions here. Um, and Carla, I see your question about the Amazon thing. We're going to come back to it. Uh, so Tawan is asking, will you be giving out the information on how to join the flock group in here or do we have to email you? You would email me, Tawana. Email me, info at blackblockchainconsultants.com. Uh, so, oh, Carla's saying she's not in the inner circle yet. Okay, I, I saw your name from earlier today. So... Uh, hopefully you'll join us. Um, Corey's asking, how do we get on the list to find a Python study group? You should either contact Dawn Brooks directly or please put something in the main um, BBC flock uh, group saying, I'm looking for a study group on Wednesday at 7 Pacific time or whatever and people will let you know if they have a study group available for you. Uh, Nofisi is asking, is the tutoring every week? Yes, every week, except that there's a holiday or something understandable um, like that. Other than that, yes, the tutoring will be every week. And again, we're gonna have two people, one on a Saturday morning, which will be Melissa, and then somebody else in the middle of the week, either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Um, so, um, and one more thing before I bring on my panelists here. I sent an email in regards to getting feedback about the program so that we can make the inner circle even better. Um, I'm going to, after Eugenia and Tessa and Dr. Keish and everybody else, Tommy talks tonight, I'm gonna open up the floor for people to tell me either in the Q&A or the chat, or you can put it in Flock, or you can email me privately. Um, I wanna know how to make this program better because as we're writing the business plan for it, if there are things that we should be doing, don't hold it in. I'm not perfect and I'm definitely, I, I can't read minds and I've got a lot of stuff going on 
Um, so I might not recognize that something is an issue. So if you would please give me feedback. Um, so start thinking about it now, and then I'll, I'll tell you when it's time to put it in the chat or the Q&A for us. But Eugenia and Tessa, you did our first apprenticeship, which was our uh, Scrota White Paper Review. Mm. And yes. I would love to hear how that experience was. Eugenia, I'll go, go ahead and let you speak because you didn't get a chance to talk to an interview. So <laughs> feel free. I'll just jump in later. Not a problem. Um, I really enjoyed it. Doing the research, um, what I, like I said before, for me, I thought, hmm, am I too old for this? And coming to the realization, no, I am not. So in preparation for reading the Scrota White Paper and doing the analysis, I went ahead and printed out Bitcoin's um, uh, White Paper. And I usually don't pronounce this correctly, White Paper. So that way I can read it, I can see how they structured it and kind of compare Scrotas to that, to theirs, and went from there. Um, I understand in hearing the interview that he didn't put a lot in his white paper on purpose until his patent went through. So in the analysis, we had a lot of questions. Um, Tawana contributed, uh, Tessa and I contributed to that analysis, and we had a lot of questions because there were a lot of elements that were missing. But for me, I, I needed to make sure that I was prepared to do it, to do the job. So that's what I did. So that way I could um, be the best that I could be and contribute what I could to the analysis. So it was, it was an experience. It was great. I'm glad that I stepped out of my comfort zone and participated in it. Fantastic. Tessa? Um, I was not expecting to step out, but I was willing to <laughs> step out if nobody else would. That's honest. I um, just wanted to come side by side to help Eugenia, and I was not expecting to to do the be the person to talk. I was expecting to be the sidekick, answer the questions that Eugenia did the talk, but it didn't work like that. But um, it was good because Eugenia and I got together after her own, like getting herself prepared for it. She and I would meet together at certain times just to kind of go over what we're going to talk about. She did an outline, how we're going to ask questions, um, which questions we're going to ask. We just spent time together to be prepared for this interview since it was the first one. Um, I was surprised to see him. I knew he was young, so I could tell he was nervous. So I didn't want him to be intimidated. So just, it was really relaxing. Um, one of the things I put in an analysis and I kind of explained it to him later when I thanked, thanked him um, privately that, um, you know, you, your white paper sounds private, like your private coin, but the white paper should never be private. It should be public so that your investors will have an understanding, like Lenin's terms. But when he began to explain that coin, which I think is brilliant because he really wants to do something with the government and it's mainly like a security token. The more he talked about it, I understood why he was not very forthcoming in that white paper. When he began to talk, I said, oh my God, we got a brilliant kid right here. I think that hour was not long enough for me because he was just saying so uh, many things, so many things that were coming with this scroller ideal and it being like uh, more of a security token and what he wants wants to take with it, you know, and where he wants to go, especially with it for the government, you know, protecting things like this. And um, yeah, I just thought it was really good. I can tell he had a little bit of problem of breaking down um, him being a developer in the code or trying to break things down on layman's terms. Like Dwight, maybe you might, Dwayne, excuse me, you might have that same problem too, because you guys know a lot. It's kind of sometimes difficult to break it down that we who are not developers and coders can understand that. And I saw he was, doing that a little bit so I kind of helped him out like well you mean this you know trying to work it out but it was really good he was really um very informative and he also let me know privately he has two other things that he's working on that he may come to us about later Fantastic. But, yeah he has two other things and he's getting a, a white paper together now with someone he's going to bring it back to us like you already know and um he's going to have us work over it um I think he wants us to check out the website he's about to do but there are other two things Things he's that he has that he wants to bring on, but um, yeah, she was a two hour interview because I really wanted to pick his brain because I just think he's brilliant to be that young and he had nobody to help him. And his brother is working with Lisk, one of the coins that dropped from 10 but is down. But 
one of the brothers was working for the list coin that was up there at the 10 top coins. And I'm thinking like, why didn't that brother help him? I'm thinking like, wow, you're here doing this by yourself, like you're at your age. And he's really working what he's working. So he was really open and happy that we were willing to help him, not charge him, but we're learning something mm -hmm. and we're willing to help him. And he trusts us like that. I just think it's amazing. Fantastic. Well, I'm so glad he got his patent. Um, so I, yeah. I, this is something I didn't know. So congratulations to him. I will say two things. Um, one that I heard and then one that uh, you may not know. So the first is the power of networking. So there's a saying that your net worth is determined by your network. And if you are part of the inner circle and you're not participating in the apprenticeships and you're not going to any association meetings or any meetups or anything like that, it's going to be difficult for you to get a job or get a, or business opportunities or things like that within this community. Um, networking is very important. And now Tess and Eugenia, even more than me, has, you know, a solid in with a, a young shining star uh, who's probably going to come to them for a lot of different things. Um, so that's very important to, to remember. Uh, and I understand people working, you got kids, things like that, but just getting involved in something so that you can expand your network um, is so important. The second is there's a guy named Sam Sun Williams, S-A-M-S-O-N, Sam Sun Williams. He's really on LinkedIn. But I was introduced to him. Do you know that he charges people tens of thousands of dollars to do what you did for Scrota? Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. So I would suggest you follow him on, um, on LinkedIn. People pay him a lot of money. He's in the FinTech world. Um, but people pay him a lot of money. They come to him for 10 minutes uh, for free. And then after that, they have to pay him. And he's very, very good at what he does. And he's very well known um, uh, as one of the top black blockchain consultants out there. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like Ian Bellina, but really on the blockchain right. white paper side. Um, so, you know, just when you guys are talking, I'm like, well, that's what Samsung does. So and you aren't that, off, that aren't that far off from being where he is. So wow. just FYI. Um, yeah. So I, um, I'm going to have um, Dr. Keisha and Dwayne now talk about uh, the school. So we are starting a school. And again, if you have uh, your certified blockchain expert, you can be a part of that as we get mm -hmm. up and running and going. But Dr. Keisha and Dwayne, tell us what your update is. All right, well, Dwayne, I, I guess I'll jump in. Um, well, Dwayne and I are, are working on just outlining um, our content, essentially, for the school. Um, we have some deadlines at this point to bring forth our, um, you know, uh, freshman year content, per se, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and so we're kind of just uh, sharing a document at this point, just outlining those things. Um, so we're still we're still working. We're still working on it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I think um I think we just had we didn't get a chance to um really make the deadlines. I think that I think we're gonna have to put those in. Oh, you oh, know, I thought we did have them. Okay. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Like to get a certain amount of it done, at least you know, it, because I, I got to work like that. Uh, then I can have a lot a certain amount of time to it. Okay. Uh, you know. On a constant basis so I, I guess i'll talk to you about it when we get off yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh what dr keisha was talking about was freshman content so let's let me break that down so this is my philosophy about the school um and just learning blockchain in general whether we are in the inner circle or you're not if you think about college there's freshman sophomore junior and senior year and as a non-tech person all of us right now started in freshman year Freshman mm -hmm. year is your general studies. General studies for us was that certified blockchain expert course that we took with Blockchain Council. We are creating something equivalent, yet it's going to be culturally relevant, and it's going to go through something with the certification from the Center for Blockchain Studies. That's our 
schools. The Center for Blockchain Studies is going to do uh, training for people. Sophomore year is you get a little bit further up the food chain. That's Python. So right now we're taking the course from Coursera as a sophomore. Eventually we may come up with our own Python course. Who knows? Junior year is when you pick a major. What kind of majors can you pick in blockchain consulting? You can choose to focus on smart contracts. You could choose to focus on um, Hyperledger fabric or um, Ethereum, or you can choose to do use case consulting or things like that. Whatever you decide to focus on, that becomes your major as a junior, and you take courses around that. And then senior year, you take final courses, and I'll put that in quotes, whatever those final courses are. So that's where we're going through now, and most of us are taking Python, which is kind of like us being in our sophomore year. So uh, that's what she was referring to when she said freshman year. So freshman year is what we are creating within our school right now, and then eventually we'll kind of uh, move from there. Um, the one deadline that I asked Dr. Keisha, and you weren't on the, the line, Dwayne, with us on that day, is for that's us- That's why, okay. Yes, I never, uh, yes, that's why I missed it. <laughs> That's why I'm like, why don't I have a deadline? Uh, so, so July, July is the deadline. Okay, July what? Uh, end of July. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. End of July. So by, by, by the end of July. By the end of July for us to have our blockchain, certified blockchain course. And we will have the Center for Blockchain Studies up by that time. So, everybody. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know me, but we're going to move. We're going to move quick. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you, need to, you need to call me more often. I'm like, oh, no, she's she not here. Mining, mining, mining. That's what I'm mining. No, but I'm almost done. I just, I'm just, I'm almost done. Everyone on here need to get on the mining. You need to get on the mining. Like right now, like this week. Share, oh, share, share, share. share. Wait, wait. Segue, segue, segue. I'm sorry. Segue, see, then you're going to say it. No, can you just segue, please? Just, just please. Please, what you got? What you, what you working with doing? I know you got the inner silicon, the inner, inner silicon D9 and the inner silicon S11. Those okay. right now, um, the D9, um, I, I, I just got, got mine through today. It just came out. It's gonna, they're all going to ship on Saturday. Um, $212, like $147 to $212 a day. Hmm. We got, um, we setting up a, we have a co location. And you just gotta pay like eighty five dollars. So to Benito, like we set up, set it up. We set set up the electricity and everything else. So in Jersey, so we just buy them, send them to Jersey, set them up, and it's just thoughts. Because I'm so excited about it. Because and I try to tell everybody about it. Can like we I, put it on, I, I haven't got an email. You know, I'm on every single. No, no, no. Well, I, no, in my DU my um, minor um, minor group, in the DU my, um, crypto miners. If you right. join that group, you'll right. see everything in there. Okay. Um, I think that that right there, like this week, it, I'm excited about it because you have to do it like now, like this week, because right. when everyone gets it, then the difficulty goes up and it, yeah. and, and it goes down. Okay. But the first two months, you could basically pay for all that stuff that you just bought. Wow. And then well, you just, what are you then mining? just mining. Then you're just mining. What, what coins are you mining right now? Are, are you um, mining? Decred, Sia coin, Litecoin, um, Benito's doing Bitcoin Cash. He's doing so you, decred too. You have, a pool, a you, you have a pool already? You guys have a pool already? So what we did, what we did was um, we're doing everything in stages, right? Stages and steps. So we first said, okay, because you know, we all said, okay, who's serious? Right. Everyone <laughs> get their own miners and do it for themselves. We yeah, out the, so out how, the crumbs, yeah, we right? Finished, we finished step one. Like after I just I just pressed yes to this D9 right now. That's why I just smiling. I got it. But um, <laughs> wow. but um, I just got that one. But after that, then we make all our money and we make that back. Then the next step is that we're gonna um, we in in Louisiana where the electricity is very cheap, eight point six kilowatts an hour. We, right now we having another guy check out to see. Um, he has to change all of the electricity. We're gonna run a thirty five um, a thirty five uh, rig in there. And then with that money, we go, we're buying a building. Okay. We're buying a building by September. Okay. Yeah. We have and, it all 
or okay. set up. We have to go all fly. Guys, we we're going to be go here at 10 o'clock tonight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will definitely. I'm sorry. So, so, so the suggestion is if you want to hear more about this, Dwayne, what's the name of the, um, of the Facebook group? Oh, oh, DU Crypto Miners? DU Crypto Miners. So if you want to go hear all about this, Dwayne is a DU Crypto Miners on Facebook. So yeah, he does have a lot of energy, Linda. I just, <laughs> I, I need to get some I, I just so. <laughs> got energized. I'm I know you're excited. But I just got it. And but we, we talk about mining. Mining? Oh, you get a lot of energy when you talk about mining. Yeah. So, um, Tommy, why don't you tell us about your deal and the, um, we talked about a potential apprenticeship or something like that. that yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, thanks for that, Cherie. So, uh, again, guys, I'm Thomas, and um, I am um, very, very well known in a lot of groups, but um, currently, um, <clears throat> what Cherie is, is is referring to is um, I want I want everybody to just think about 2002 or two, the 2000s. Remember when we always went to the fast food restaurants and you know we was all paying in cash. You know we couldn't. It was all strictly cash. You had to get out. No, it was no credit cards back then. It was all credit, cash. Do you remember that when it was just strictly cash? 2002, 2003 is when, you know, McDonald's was the first, you know, I guess franchise that wanted to um, start accepting credit cards for, you know, meals. So their net worth was what they said, $110, $110 billion in 2002. Um, there was case studies out. 2003, it went to 135, 2004, 160, 2005, 180. It just gradually kept going up and up and up because of the credit cards. Now, the segue to where we at right now is with cryptocurrency. 1% <clears throat> of the 1% of the companies out here is not accepting cryptocurrency. Crypto isn't going anywhere. It's, it just, it's just point blank period, you know. And, you know, um, there's a platform currently out. There's probably many platforms out right now that's accepting crypto for services and goods. Um, what my goal and objective is tonight is to create a, a subsidiary group from off of the BCC, which will um, attack these e-commerce businesses, you know, and provide these case studies and, and like, look, listen, this this is what happened. If you now, it, it could happen and it could not, but crypto isn't going anywhere, you know. So, um, it's nothing to implement this technology onto your platform. You know, it may be one um, small fee to set it up, but um, currently I'm taking a uh, back end course, uh, Laravel and the PHP course to implement it but once it gets implemented it's just like clicking plug and play so you've probably been on some of these e-commerce sites now where you play with paypal from paypal wasn't accepted anywhere it was it's an api you click it bang 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 that's how crypto is going to be so what i'm um instituting is i'm trying to get some some guys that want to you know um attack this platform and, and make it our baby you know when we go to these mom and pops or whatever type of stories you can do it on your own website. If you're doing your own website, you know, it's called coinpayments.net. It's called coinpayments.net. This is the actual architecture and platform that's um, providing over 420 cryptocurrencies for services and goods. So just imagine you want to sell your sneakers on your website. Um, you hire us. Or you don't hire us, you know, to implement this, you know, all we can say is, look, um, crypto was out right now. So, you know, if you implement this cart on your website, you know, um, you are potentially, you could possibly, you know, increase your sales by this is that much. We show the case studies and that forth and, and so on. But um, the kickback that the um, BCC would get we, as an affiliate, we would get 25% um, of every, 25% um, of their gross net cryptocurrency sales for five years. So if they sell um, $1,000, say in June, and we um, onboarded them to the coinpayments.net, 
our company would get $250 just for onboarding them. Not even programming it. We don't even have to implement it onto their website. We would just refer them to this organization. Now, if we wanted to, if they wanted to pay us to, you know, program their backend servers to implement it, you know, we could charge whatever we want after that. But just to um, referring them, we would get 25% for five years. And that's just one company. So that being said, you know, um, we're looking for, I, well, what I would like to do is start a group which that would um, actually, we would need, I guess, a project manager, somebody in marketing, promotion, you know what I mean? Somebody that's really skilled. You know what I mean? You don't have to do crypto. It's not even crypto. Just your marketing promotion skills, you know, if you're very articulate and detail-oriented, because we would have to send these emails off to these, like, high-end executives, you know, to, to provide these case studies, like, hey, what's, what's, what's the um, harm in just trying it? You know what I mean? Because crypto isn't going anywhere, guys. The blockchain isn't going anywhere. So, um, Shree, that's where I wanted to segue into, you know, if we could possibly, if, the, if anybody that's listening, they want to participate into this um, venture, you know, we... We would just have to have a separate group and, you know, mm-hmm. this would be our baby. You know, I know everybody has, you know, um, jobs and, you know, lives. But um, just just remember, remember 2002, nobody and they wasn't taking credit cards. Now, if we is the forefront of that, imagine just our organization that's leading that, you know, or just even implementing or just introducing it. You know, I know there's other legal obligations that's to go behind that, but that's where um, the group and I've been on, I'm setting up the platform now. I'm taking a couple of our classes now, but it's just pretty much a plug and play, like a, like a um, PayPal widget cart, you know, and, uh, and to be honest, my, my revenue sales has increased. So a lot of my friends, because a lot of my friends are in crypto. So we're exchanging crypto. They don't want to spend any fiat. They got crypto. They've been doing some investments or some mining with some false sites and hey they want to give us some crypto and that's just that you know what i mean okay well you have someone here that's saying they may be interested so this is what we'll do we will uh set up a group in uh, flock and if you're interested you can look for that group what you want to call a coin payment you want to call uh, the group coin payment yeah absolutely absolutely okay so uh tonight i'll set up the group in flock It'll be called coin payment and either, you know, tonight or tomorrow you can come in uh, and then Tommy will set up another meeting where you can flush out the details. Uh, Some of you. So one of the things that that I thought was interesting about what Tommy would talk was talking about. And this is why um, I wanted to have him come on tonight was because he talked about testing, having these companies test the coin payment system to see if there would be an increase in their sales. And if there's an increase in their sales, you can use it and write it up as a use case. So Mm -hmm. imagine if, and this is why I said apprenticeships, you know, but you could end up being a paid apprenticeship. Um, Imagine if you're able to get 10 or 20 of these companies and you write up use cases on all of them and the average company sales go up X percent. And then you're able to take that study and publish it different places. And then you're able to be the uh, crypto retail expert. You see where I'm headed here. Absolutely. So these are the types of things, again, within the inner circle that you're able to do and get that you can't get on your own. So, or you could, but uh, it'd be a lot harder. Um, so with that, um, I'll set up the coin payments group and flock tonight. And if you want to be a part of it, um, Tommy's in charge, so he's going to be setting up the meetings and all of that. Um, I will, you know, just be doing the rah, rah for you guys to get to 10 million or 20 million or 20 million or whatever amount of money that you, uh, choose to get to. So, Easy money. um, but you have several people in here that's saying that they're interested. So hopefully I gave you a bit of a vision yes, of how that could did. work. Yes, Absolutely. And that's where I got mm-hmm. it from when you said, and then, you know, that's just the cuspus of it. Now imagine if an ICO come out and we onboard them, you know, to, mm-hmm. you know, the fiat too. And that's where our, our real bread and butter will come from. You know, we will be the liaison between, you know, the, um, 
interchanging of the fiat to the crypto, then the crypto to the fiat. I mean, with the blockchain, the the the, the ceiling is, is 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 off. There's no ceiling. There's no ceiling. Right. So with that, I have a couple of more questions here, and then I'm going to ask for your feedback on, on the program uh, for everybody to tell me their feedback. Okay, so there's a question here about uh, how old was the young man? I think they're talking about Christian. He's in his early 20s, if, I, if I'm guessing. Probably. Probably. Yeah, we didn't really ask him his age, but I would say early 20s. Um, Tahira is asking, there is more feedback than Q&A. I couldn't see the questions from Saturday's study group. It would be beneficial for me to see the question. Um, we are going to ask Melissa, we're going to ask people to start submitting their questions. So hopefully you'll be able to get the, um, the questions like that. Um, but again, Tahira, that was our very first call. So we're playing mm -hmm. around with it as well. Um, so Terrence is asking, when is everyone coming to Cali for our first face-to-face -face networking meeting? Terrence, we have something really big planned for the fall. I can't tell you more than that right now, but I'm shoring up some stuff. I'm putting some stuff together uh, on Wednesday, actually. And as soon as we have the ink dry, uh, Dwayne knows about it. And uh, it's going to be big. It's going to be good. So... That's all we're going to say. But trust me, there'll be plenty of time for you to, uh, you know, for you to absorb it all. And, and uh, I think you'll like what we have planned for the fall. So um, Carla's asking, or saying she's uh, 56 years old and excited about the blockchain business. As you all speak about Amazon, I can... I'm comparing it to Ma Bell. Oh, I remember Ma Bell. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, wouldn't Amazon have a monopoly issue if their advantage is such that no entity, no other entity can compete? What am I missing? Um, I don't necessarily think you're missing anything. Um, no. Those regulatory issues are being worked out. That's still yeah. a new thing too. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. I I, I also think that the country's changing, politics are changing. Mm -hmm. uh, people used to. There's always the ebb and flow of companies merging, and this is what we're seeing a, a lot now. Mm -hmm. If you watch CNBC, is a lot of companies merging, and then people feeling like there's too much merging, and then there's you know. Uh, splitting up of companies and it's always been an ebb and flow. So, um, so yeah. Um, so feedback about the inner circle before we, we wrap up tonight, if you want to put it in the Q and a, if you want to put it in the chat, if any of my panelists here, um, want to tell me some things that you're thinking, I, I, you know, I, I'm open to constructive criticism about anything that we could be doing better. Uh, and, and no, Terrence, it's not a retreat in Bali. <laughs> I wasn't that creative. <laughs> I, just want, I just want to like to say, um, you know, whoever's out there watching, you know, and you guys are just curious about the blockchain and cryptocurrency and, and, and whole, you know, um, this is an excellent opportunity to to get in on the ground floor mm -hmm. like the ground right. floor. imagine if you was in that conversation when mark zuckerberg called his homies up I'm like yo i got this idea you know you know and um uh, it, it was it, it's it's actually a, a a known fact that he called 10 people and only like seven five six showed up and you know they're they're out you know but then again you know um they the, the other guys they're still doing well but they're not doing well as they could have been and, mm -hmm. and you know the blockchain isn't going anywhere guys it's the web 3.0 mm -hmm. um yahoo you know google you know um remember aol you know mm -hmm. it's, it's free enterprise whatever you have you know you can add to the blockchain you know if you have brilliant ideas you know it's free enterprise that's the american that's the american way you know make it better if you have something make it better and this in this group of um 
excellent individuals. They are brilliant in here, and they'll be able to help you and guide you through a, a lot. You know, there's no age, um, no age constraints. There's no, um, okay. no knowledge just constraints. Just come with, with what you what you know, and we'll be here to help you. Yeah, and Perez is asking, shouldn't we be teaching our kids to understand the blockchain? That's part of the school that we're creating. Okay. So one of the things that Dawn Brooks is doing with us, I thank you, Dawn, you are one of my rocks, girl, um, is uh, we are looking for workforce development grants as part of our Center for Blockchain Studies. And a part of that will help us educate young people. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so when I say 50,000 a year, we're not playing with that number. Like that's, you know, that's for real. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, we're working on that. Um, Diana's asking, what's my email address? Um, it is info at blackblockchainconsultants.com. Info at blackblockchainconsultants.com. Uh, anybody else have anything else to say before we wrap up? Because uh, I always say we're going to be an hour and we're always longer. I have one thing to say. Yes, sir. Um, there's an update. I saw, I, I think I put it on the, on the DU, but um, basis, basis.io, I thought they were doing something very interesting where they are trying to make the first algorithmic, uh, algorithmic central bank. So the problem with crypto is that, um, that why a whole bunch of people don't accept it because it's not stable. They mm -hmm. are going to make a coin and they've been they've been um they didn't do ico i don't think they did a private sale or whatever they got funded by andreessen horowitz for like 133 million so they're done and um there's some kids from princeton and this i love this idea they're making coins but the computer so when you people buy the coins right so if they want the coins to be at a certain rate or like the u.s dollar they're going to do what exactly what the u.s dollar does when the money supply becomes to um, when it becomes when too many people start buying, when you when you, you know it pushes when the price goes starts going up, they're gonna release more coins. They're gonna sell more coins. They're mm. gonna release more coins into the um, into the system, and then when the price starts going down, they're gonna buy back the coins to less the the volume. So it always stays stable. So it's, they're always doing this, like you know so. Interesting. Um, algorithmically, the computer does it. So then you can have a stable coin. And once you have a stable coin, you know, like a dollar is a dollar is a dollar today, you know, the, you know, oh, I sold my Bitcoin last week. That's why I don't even move my Bitcoin because I want to use it. I want to use it. I want to use it to buy all this stuff. I don't want to keep on using, taking $7,000. <laughs> Here three thousand dollars. I'm broke. Like, <laughs> like, because you don't want to use the stuff that you have because you know it's going to be worth a gazillion like dollars. You don't want to, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But if it was just worth twenty dollars, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think you would take, that. So that's what they're they're doing. So it's a protocol. I have to read more about their white paper, but you should check it out. Basis.io. I, I I thought about it again as you were talking about um getting these stores on involved because I think that. That's that's the thing that they don't want. They don't. They want to know that a dollar is a dollar because why are we still right. thinking in dollars? We should be thinking in crypto, but we're not. We're still thinking about oh, how many Moneros is a dollar? You know what I mean? Or you know, yeah. we shouldn't be thinking like that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I see a couple more questions here. Um, Tara saying hello, first time listener. Welcome, welcome, Tara. Uh, just curious, does anyone take meeting minutes or? Are there meeting notes on the website? I think similar question was just asked. So we record this session and it's on Facebook now in our Black Blockchain Consultants um, group. It's also gonna be on our YouTube page tomorrow morning. So no, no one takes meeting minutes uh, here, but you can see the recordings, past recordings. And um, the caress is asking Dwayne, what is the name of the company again? Basis.io. Is that B-A-S-I-S? -S? Yeah. Basis.io. Yes, it is. Okay. I put a link in the chat. <laughs> I'm sorry? I put a link in the chat to the white paper and to the site. Okay. That was a All right. good share, Dwayne. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um I want to thank everyone for being here. Oops, I got another question here. Hold on. Oh, Tara's saying, great. Awesome, she'll refer to the videos. You are welcome. 
Uh, does anyone else have any final words before we wrap up? No? No, it was, it was a pleasure being here and yeah. part of this group is awesome. And I do encourage everyone to, if you're not a part of the, the Black uh, Blockchain Consultant Group, join. If you're not a part of the Inner Circle, do so. Um, you will not be sorry. You will not be sorry. Well, I want to thank everyone for uh, being with us almost an hour and a half. And um, Carla, you're asking, uh, what do you suggest as a first white paper to review? So Eugenia, do you suggest the Bitcoin white paper is the first yes. one to review? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's the original. Yeah. So I um, want to thank everyone for being here. Again, $3.1 trillion industry. All we want you to do is get your piece get your piece. Yeah. And if you're a part of a group like this, there's a ton of business opportunities that are going to be thrown at you. And all you have to do is choose one and be successful with it. So with that, I want to say God bless you to everybody and have a good evening. And uh, next month, we'll be back with more info. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye -bye.